I'm at a gypsy. You're like entering the youngest to win this, youngest to do <laughs> like you're you're kind of entering that that territory. So how was that experience? Oz GP putting it on pole, youngest dude to do it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I was thinking about this on the way here. Like when we did the first one, we'd only done one race, but now second report, I suppose we've done another four, four or five, I think. But yeah. uh yeah, cool, cool to get my first pole at AGP. I felt like we'd been so close so many times, so uh finally pulled it off um and then to convert to a a win was pretty cool but a cool weekend to do it like obviously every weekend's cool when you can get a good result but to do it at the grand prix was pretty special yeah and it's such a such a crazy vibe there and obviously melbourne's just crazy for sport in general but then i think that with and like I mean, dude, AGP was where the whole COVID thing happened. Yeah, like that right. literally yeah, was like the I was off. there, and it was like the first <laughs> domino in the world. And then after that, all hell broke loose. So I think there almost felt like something a bit more special around the Oz GP this time around. It's like the it's like the fans really appreciate what they got there. You know, it was pretty feral though at some point. It's like the lines <laughs> for the toilets and it was, oh, just, it, was chaos. it was insane the amount of people like. How many did they get through the gates? Do you remember? Oh, it was yeah. 400, isn't yeah. it, for the weekend? That Sunday was ridiculous. Like, I've never seen so many people in one late yeah. place, it felt like. And back of the pits, all the support paddock, it was, it was pretty cool to see, but it was full on. Did it translate to, like, energy on the on the racetrack, in a sense? You know, like, when you really feel, like, the vibe of the crowd, like, were, were you guys going feral too? Well, that Sunday race, yeah. Like, it was packed everywhere, so... Yeah. And I think we put on a reasonable show, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm pretty, sh- I'm pretty short, short ones, ones for us. Oh for yeah, the Grand a couple Prix. of races were bad. We yeah. we got bumped down the order quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's still such a cool experience. I mean, racing there and and even on Sunday's race, we're quite early in the morning. But when you're racing, you don't notice too much. But on your warm up and cool down lap, the place was packed. That's and so I sick. think we we're on at like nine o'clock in the morning. And yeah, there's hundreds thousand people there. It's it's pretty epic. Yeah, and so. As a pole sitter now, as someone that's done it, how gnarly is it to do the perfect lap in a V8 supercar when you've got, like, this dude and all the other dudes that can just lay down a heater? Like, is it a crazy focus and intensity that goes into that? Um, it is. I, d- I don't know if I've done a perfect lap yet. Okay. <laughs> and I, I think in these, these cars at the moment, it's very hard to do a perfect lap. I feel like everyone's... Maybe not made a little mistake, but doesn't have the perfect thing going on. So, for that qualifying session, we are on wets in the session before. And it was at that point of when you put a slick on. Mm. And we I, th- we, I think we both put slicks on, but both missed our laps at the end because of a red flag. And, um, yeah, we took a bit of a risk in that qualifying session and, and pitted for another set. And the track had just dried up in time. So, it's a cool, f- it's a great feeling. I mean, when you do get pole and... And you're starting up front. Um, obviously, you've you've done the fastest lap of the rest, but yeah, I don't know if I've done a perfect lap yet. I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Have you ever done it like a just chef's kiss perfect uh, lap for a, for a pole? Yeah, I've done probably a few like, good ones, but there's probably always something in it. I so guess, there's but... there's never like a perfect lap, you reckon? I don't know. How do you answer it? You know, like, it's hard to know. Yeah. 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 I've done a few good ones where you think, oh, that's good. And then someone's beaten you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hard to know. Yeah. Because it it would be like, it'd be interesting to know if, like, you actually could have got another tenth or a couple tenths out of something. Or if it's like, that was just it. Yeah. You have a lot in races. Like, when you're in a rhythm, you can be like tenth for tenth every lap and be so in tune with everything. But over one lap, it's pretty hard to do it. But. In a race, yeah, you can be in like a full rhythm and yep. feel everything in the car and manage everything and be doing the same tenth every lap is pretty cool. Yeah. I even notice like when I'm training and I'll, I'll put the stopwatch on the bars and the moto and I'm like, right, righto. That you've, you've done like five lap warm up and you're like, all right, I'm feeling sweet. And then as soon as you press that timer, you overshoot the first turn, <laughs> save, <laughs> saving it, overshoot the next one. Over. So is yeah. that kind of what you're like trying to not do in a sense when you're like cross that line for a for a pole lap yeah I, I try not to overthink it and just yeah full send i guess and it's normally good if you got someone in front of you you see where they break you try and go that little bit later or yeah. take a bit more curve or whatever so yeah you're always trying to compare to someone as well yeah so you've uh you've had a few 
good results this year, a bunch of podiums, a bunch of wins. What are you doing with the trophies? Are you like slowly building out a cabinet or like what's the, what, have you got a plan at the moment? <laughs> well, I don't actually keep them. The team keep our trophies. Oh, really? Oh, they do have the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, we can get replicas. I haven't ordered any yet, but I do plan on it. But um, yeah, we got a couple of didgeridoos on the weekend. So yeah. uh, that, that was cool. Something different. But uh, yeah, they're sitting up at work at the moment. <laughs> so no no full man cave going yet? Well, I do. Like the- I feel like I got a good man cave, but it's just, I suppose, all my go-kart and Super 2 and Super 3 trophies. But uh, I got my trophies from last year. I got all the replicas made. And yeah. I planned on doing it at the start of the year, getting them made. But yeah. Um, yeah, you sort of go to order one and go, oh, that's that's pretty expensive. And then you get a few more and it's like, damn, that's going to cost me a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, have you got like the full cabinet going no, on? No, I don't like trophies, but dad, really dad has them all. He oh, gets all yeah. the replicas. The only ones I got are the surfboards. So yeah, thankfully okay. got a few of them. They're all in my garage, but the other ones, I don't need them. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's the most SBG answer <laughs> of all time. Yeah. So uh, the races that I've seen this year... There's actually been some pretty epic, like, full just bar banging going on, like you and Kostecki and... and We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125, Gypsy Gang.